Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here. So, got another tutorial for you today, and we're learning the cloven dagger weave. This is this design and pattern here. Now, if my uh, fact checking is correct, this is an original design by D Man McHugh, and I'll annotate that in the description, of course. I'm going to give you guys a quick close up look at it. It's a very nice repeating pattern here. Of course, we're doing the knot and loop today. As you can tell from the side profile, it is quite, uh, it's a bit more on the thick side. So uh, just take that into account when you're doing your measurement and uh, you know how it will wear. There's the back side. Okay, and I'm using the uh, burgundy and green today. So overall, uh, this one, this design is uh, not too hard, but it is a little more time consuming. So uh, you can take that into account. All right, so, um, and before we get started, just wanted to give a quick thank you again to uh, paracordstore.com. They sent me some paracord to check out and review, and uh, they do have very high quality products, so I will uh, annotate the link to their store down below. They have very reasonable prices, so uh, if you're looking for a good supplier of paracord, do check them out. Alright, so that being said, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so I got my paracord ready. Got about uh, just a little over seven feet of the green about four feet of the burgundy paracord. Now I'm going to start this bracelet slightly different. Um, normally I would have started this bracelet similar to the Bane's Cuff uh, hitch where you kind of uh, do the cow's hitch. Uh, you've seen it and uh, you'll see it in the Bane's Cuff paracord tutorial. But uh, I'm going to slightly change it up because uh, I find that this loop uh, sometimes it can be a little too uh, wide. It doesn't taper off nicely. Um, to make a nice loop so that when you close the bracelet, you know, you want the end here to be kind of pinched shut. So anyways, whether, regardless if that makes sense or not, uh, we're going to start off with our shorter cord with the burgundy. Now what I'm going to do, I've just found the midpoint here. Now we're going to start off with a single snake knot, uh, snake knot, okay, or snake knot weave. So we're going to take one cord around like this, okay, and then we're going to take the other cord behind that, and we're going to go through this loop here. I'm sure if you guys are familiar with the snake knot, you'll know this by heart already. And then we're going to pull this shut. So you can see we're making our uh, snake knot as the kind of for the loop here. So now we can adjust and make our half inch loop. Right? So I'm going to adjust that, get it to where I think I need it. Right about there, that should be good. And again, if your brace it sized properly, um, the size of the loop shouldn't matter because the tension will keep it on. Okay, so now we've got this. Now <clears throat> we're going to take each side of the cord, we're just going to cross them over like that on each side. And put this down here. Then we're going to take our longer cord. I'm going to take my green. And I'm just going to find the midpoint of my green cord here, my longer cord. Now, uh, you're going to take this midpoint of your cord and you're going to do a cow's hitch over these two crossed over strands here. Okay, so I'm going to put that through there, like this. Then I'm going to bring this through, just like that. So you can see what I'm doing here, if I just hold it steady. And now I'm just going to close everything, just cinch it shut. I'm going to pull all the excess through. And this can get a little tricky, but uh, just work with it until you get everything nicely cinched up. And there you go. So now we're ready to start the uh, main weave. We've got our loop ready to go. This will be held in place. In, uh, this green cord has been uh, hitched onto the, on the burgundy, and we can start our main weave from here. Okay, so now we can start the main weave. We're going to start by taking the burgundy strands, I'm just going to cross them behind our green strands like this. Okay, so we've got uh, two loops on either, either side. Now we're going to start with the right. We're going to take the green strand on the right. We're going to go behind and through the loop like that. So we've gone through once, like this. 
and then we're going to kind of just cross it over the green like that uh, so you got this little you know X here and then we're going to bring it back around through we try to get the whole end through so you can see so you've got your X there you see that green X okay we're going to take the other end and we're going back through again just through the same loop and then we're going to go underneath that one there I know this is a little confusing right now because I've got all these cords in the way but um, like that so you'll know you did it right I just want to get that out of the way too you'll know you did it right when you look at it look at your cords and you see how I've got this almost like this figure 8 or infinity sign here so you can see these are my two two burgundy are crossed over and then you've got that one goes behind once behind again and through the middle like that okay and then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side so I'm gonna just kinda cinch this closed a bit or not we'll just leave it like that okay so now again we're going to go out behind and through so remember you're kinda of pu pulling it through on the outside like this okay and then we're gonna cross it over make that X there like that and then we're gonna bring it back through behind these two burgundy strands and we're gonna go through through the loop we just created here okay I think this will be a bit more clear after I get these first this first knot down. You can see it again. Okay, so I know this looks a little messy now. I'm going to pull on my burgundy strands here, and at the same time, I'm going to pull on these ones on the green. You can see our knot slowly starting to form. This is one of those knots you just have to play with. Uh, it is a little bit more time consuming, as I mentioned earlier. So you can see we've got this X here and this X here, right? That's basically it. And then you want to basically gradually tug on the burgundy ones and then tug on the green ones. Pardon my thumbs in the way, I just need to get all the excess out. So you can see this is what the back will look like. Just going to tighten each knot and pull on the sides again. Get that slack out. Okay, you just work it with your fingers until it looks good. Okay, so now we've got, that's the first knot. That's basically the pattern it. We're just going to repeat that technique again for the second knot. Okay, just to show you one more time. So again, we're going to cross burgundy behind like this. We're going to take the green strand on the right. We're going to loop it behind and through on the outside of the loop like this okay and then we're gonna cross it over you got that X there and then we're gonna bring it behind again like that behind your burgundy strands and we're gonna bring it through here okay through there like this like that so if I just hold it steady here for you guys to see you can kind of see what I'm doing here, okay? So it's just back and through, back and through, like that. Then we do the same thing on the other side again. So remember behind the burgundy, two strands on the outside, loop through, make your X like this, and, then, and again behind, behind the burgundy strands, and then through this little opening here. I know my thumbs are kind of in the way but um, it's just the way this weave is it's not one of those uh, knots that you can really tie very easily or just clearly because you need to just manipulate everything now you see I'm just kind of tugging on the burgundy here so that'll start, start to cinch that up and then I tug slightly on my green like this and again, this one you just need to work the paracord through and, uh, yep, pull it tight. OK, 
Okay. So we can start to see the clove and dagger weave forming. It's just like a repeated series of kind of X's. And uh, you want to pull on these uh, side strands, give them a decent amount of tension because that'll close everything up and keep the weave nice and tight going down the center. Okay, so I'm just going to keep repeating that weave. If you got confused, just, you know, I'll back up the video a little bit to see it again. You can continue weaving all the way down and then I'll show you guys how to finish it off. All right, so I'm done weaving. Uh, I've woven down the full length of my bracelet here and uh, I got a little careless and I didn't ensure that my lengths were the same. So as you can see, I've got a little excess here and uh, you want to make sure your strands are even that way. Uh, it'll make tying the end knot easier. You won't run short on one end. And uh, I did actually use a little more paracord than I thought, or actually I needed more paracord than I thought I uh, started out with. So I would push this green amount to about eight feet instead of seven. And uh, obviously if you've got a larger wrist, you'll need more. So how we're gonna finish this, uh, we've got the loop up top. So these two green strands will tie our uh, diamond knot. And just to finish off, I think it makes it look a bit nicer and cleaner. We're just gonna tie a single cobra stitch to bind these two strands together. Uh, not that they'll come apart, but I think it just looks a little bit nicer. So uh, we're gonna take the right over the uh, two middle strands, put this one through here. And we're gonna use that to uh, just end it off. You could tie like two stitches if you want. I'm just gonna do one. Okay, so from here, I'm just gonna tie my diamond knot and uh, we'll be done. And of course, I will annotate that tutorial, as always, at the end of the video, just so you'll know, uh, in case you don't know how to tie it, all right? Okay, and there we have it, we're done. So, as you can see, I've uh, decided to do a two cobra stitches. It is a little more secure, and I extended my knot a bit more. Normally, I would have the weave come maybe down to here and then do the knot, but uh, I was a little short on paracord, so I will uh, annotate that accordingly into the video. And, uh, yeah. So this bracelet is a little bit more on the thicker side, as I mentioned earlier. Yeah, do, take in, do take that into account when you do your bracelet, because it will affect the um, you know, overall, uh, the way the bracelet fits. And that's the great thing about uh, the knot and loop method, as I've mentioned you know, in other videos, is that if you have excess amount of paracord, you can you know, adjust it and tailor it on the fly. And you don't have to worry about you know, weaving until the end of your buckle, and then you're kind of stuck, you gotta restart again. Okay, so I hope I explained everything clearly and concisely. And, uh, you know, if there's any difficulties, problems, uh, please uh, do leave a comment down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can, as usual. I'll annotate all uh, related videos and methods at the end of the video as well. Okay, so that's about it, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, bye.